Again, I, I'm going to take questions at the beginning of, of the talk tonight. Um, and maybe since there were not any in the beginning, I want to check again. Are there any now that you'd like to ask in general? Hi, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not sure, but I run between like a six and a two. Okay. I, I'm still trying to figure that out. I, I, I'm thinking it's more six though. Okay. Well, I, again, I want to encourage you to not feel like you have to nail your type. And Thanks. in fact, we were just talking about that earlier that initially the process of the, of the typing is really designed to help you engage the inner observer. And so it's good when you have when you're sort of, am I this or I that? Because the questions that you will need to be asking yourself are, are internal that, as, that really talk about motivation. And I'm hoping to have some time on the, the last night after we finish the, the three types to really talk about, uh, to help some of you guys uh, reach your type, but I also have suggestions about how to find it. So, and well, also in, in, in Beatrice Chestnut's book, there's the back of the book, if you have it, actually goes discerns between the types, like the, the, the difference between the six and two, because most types have a lot of things in common. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think it's useful to um, know all the types, have any understanding of all the types? I mean, once you think you know who you are, can you just quit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's an interesting question, because I, I like that question actually I the most important thing of course is to know thyself you know and and that way you can um you know know you know begin to do your own work about what's true what's false where your reactivity is and all of that I think if if you're with somebody that is interested in looking at their type themselves I think it's also helpful um the the thing I'm a little leery of and I see happen a lot is that once people learn about the types, they make assumptions. Like if I was gonna tell you or you were gonna tell me, you know, I'm a nine, I'm a one, whatever, that that then I, you know, having read about the types, it's like, oh Donna, you don't need to tell me anything, anything more about yourself. <laughs> you know, th this is I know all about you. And and that that is what I like to guard against, but I do think there's just knowing that other people have a lens of perception. Like it helps me to know my you know my lovely daughter, who I'm sure appreciates that I talk about her so much. But but she's she um, knowing she's a one that when she sort of you know points out things that are incorrect like you know the tag is out of my shirt and i mean i know a lot of people do that but when she when she points those things out i do understand now that she's not criticizing me first of all that understanding my type for one thing and when somebody points out something wrong about me the four fixation i can go to well i'm defective there's something wrong with me so it's good to know that's yeah. not true. But I can also know that she's not trying to criticize. She's just trying to make the world better by, yeah. by correct, you know, by correcting things that are wrong, you know. And, and so I do think it, it helps to understand that everybody has a fairly benign motivation, you know, yeah. that they're not intentional. And we can hazard a guess as to what theirs might be and help us understand it. But um, that's a really interesting question. Did any, anybody else have any ideas? I mean, I, now, yeah. now that I listen to what you say before my daughter signs on, uh, <laughs> it was really fascinating for me to hear her talk about her type last time. And I think it was really, really helpful. But I mean, I just listened to her. I didn't have to say oh, right. And But you're in relationship with her. So right. I would argue that it's, it's helpful. It's Very helpful. really helpful. Like when I do couples work, um, that that it's it's really helpful if both people are sort of you know you don't have to be invested in the enneagram but are in in interested in taking self responsibility and self examination like mm -hmm. it gives a new way of of understanding each other right and it's like oh that's where they're coming exactly. from you know so um, 
So it's not, I think it is useful to know about the types, but just to remember that that representative of that particular type has to let you know what kind of type they are, you know, like, like what, what, you know, are they, we haven't even gotten into the subtypes, which I can talk a little bit more about. Uh, I can just enough to confuse you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I know my subtype. I mean, <clears throat> I got myself typed. Now then what? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, it's a very deep question. That is, um, what what type are you into? Well, I haven't got myself typed yet. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. You were posting oh, next. Yeah, posting the possibility. Um, God, there's so many things you can do with it, but the primary wisdom that's contained in the enneagram is the idea, you know, the idea which I think I mentioned the first night, and I'm really happy to go over that again because the purpose of knowing it is almost all spiritual paths have in common some variation on the idea that we have a true self, a, a divine self, an essence, whatever word you want to put to it, and then we acquire a personality as a result of our conditioning that we're, we're probably born our temperament and then our, our the nurture part of our life we have to build an identity. You can't be human and, and not acquire defense mechanisms and all those other things that help us survive our world and that we begin to identify with. So what spiritual paths have in common is the idea of disidentifying with the ego. And, and Richard Rohr calls it a method of subtraction. So the idea would be if I know what's not true, like if I know that straightening that picture is not going to bring me serenity. I might still, I might have a preference for straightening the picture, but I might I not. I don't straighten the picture. Huh? I said, I can't sit down unless the picture is straight. Right, well, that, that's what you said, but, but what, what can happen is, is that, that you believe you can't function without things being orderly. But the idea is in, in the spiritual realm, everything is already perfect and you don't, you know, that, that it's, okay. it, instead of I'm perfect, therefore I am, it's I am, therefore I'm perfect. So the idea is, is that, and then the, the concept of energy following attention, that what happens is that if we can identify how we're trying to, to achieve serenity by straightening the picture, that if we don't spend our life thinking that that's that making things quote perfect by our definition is going to bring us serenity, then we can begin not putting energy there and allowing us to live with the perfection of everything being imperfect, if that makes sense. Um, well, I, I'm bewildered and fascinated and, and, and a tad anxious that we'll run out of time before okay. we talk about those of us who don't know what type we are. Ah, okay. So much right. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. I sort of identified with Lisa in some of her nine-ishness. I identified a bit with some of the seven-ishness. In fact, I could identify with nearly all of, all of them, but not enough of any of them. <laughs> well, that, that's I mean, this is actually, a per and we won't be able I'm to. I'm with you. <laughs> we, we, won't, we won't be able to arrive at your type. This is where people, you know, forget that what I said in the beginning. I mean, not that you should remember, because I do think it's a genuine frustration that, that our, our instinct is to want to, I want to nail my type. Yeah. And, you know, when, when I can tell you, Tony, that, that in, in our, in the trainings, you know, which um, for, to become teachers of this, the actual only way a student can flunk that typing experience that I told you about is if they try to nail the type. What, what we're supposed to do, what the students are encouraged to do is give the person from the answers to their questions is give three different types. You know, like, like because you said this, if I was interviewing you, because you said this, I think you know you might be this, but you also said this and this. So these are the three types I would go and investigate. Yeah. So so the 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 goal now it that in it in and of itself is is that it's a tool that really can awaken the inner observer and to begin to ask yourself questions. You know what does motivate me? 
Yeah. And I, I don't know if, if you were here the first night, but I told the story about one time I, I had um, um, was doing a presentation for a, a subgroup of the Bar Association and they were, they were at, all of them were on some level going to be named partner in their firm, right? But we went around the table and they all had a different motivation. I, just, I, I used it to help know the type for wanting to be named partner. Yes, right? I would never know. Right, so, so one was, it would please my father. One like, well, why would you? I mean, it's the right thing to do. Why would you be in a law firm and not shoot for success? You know, um, one, it was more security. You know, I mean, and there was a difference. It's like the other was a more image related reason. Like what would people think of me if I was there for 20 years and didn't make name main partner? Yeah. But I mean, that's kind of a prosaic example, but, but essentially, you know, you can begin the process. I mean, if I had probably 15 minutes with you, I, I'd sure. be able to probably get you in an area. One of, one of the ways I would advise people is go back to the, the, the three-brained being, you know, George Gurdjieff talked about the fourth way. That's what he, that's how he used the Enneagram, that if you were a, you know, we all have, according to, to his construct, you know, we all have a brain, a heart, and an instinct, and a gut. But we tend to, he taught the fourth way when you had all three of those in balance, uh -huh. but we tended to lead with one over the other. Like my emotions will get there before my head kicks in. Now, yeah, I, I, I am very smart. I can do this stuff. But when I was a beginning social worker, all I wanted to do was adopt these kids, you know, and then I had to get a lot of training so that I could inform what I was, you know, doing. So if, if, you, if some people can locate, I was typing up a, a friend of mine's, I think, boyfriend who, you know, I said, you know, the heart has a wisdom the brain doesn't have. And he said, oh, no way. You know, and so, so those kinds of things with your, like we could rule two, three and four out for him because yeah. he's probably not a heart type. So yeah. is that is that helpful for you? Uh, you know, in the, in the sense of, I would encourage you not to look at behaviors, but Motive. at motivations. But I, I tend to be intuitive and introspective. And so, um, I, and I'm motivated by curiosity, especially okay. about other people. Okay, so that would just in general, if I were to, to do a quick one, I would say you're probably somewhere in the five, six, seven category, meaning, meaning the curiosity, like most of, most of the mental types I know are just incredibly curious at pursuit of knowledge, interested, you know, interesting is a word sevens will use a lot. Yeah. You know, five, uh, you know, introspective is not something an eight, you know, I could rule out things like, you know, eights, twos are, I mean, we all can become introspective. Yes. But it, it's not a, you know, so I could, I could rule out a few for you right now, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and you see how we're whittling that down, yeah. but, but then you can engage, you know, and I really do recommend there, there are a lot of books on the Enneagram, but I do love Beatrice Chestnut's book, the, the, um, the complete Enneagram because she goes into the subtypes, which I find I, it was more helpful to me when I found my subtype to call myself a four because the descriptions of the external behaviors of the four, I didn't really relate to, mm -hmm. you know, if that makes any sense. So I would, you know, and you're welcome. I mean, um, Lisa and Russell have my contact information and, and, and that, I didn't put it on the chat, but you're welcome to um, be in touch with me and I can answer questions and all that kind of stuff. And I, it's been a joy to just, I, you know, really I, what I hope to do is just kind of whet your appetite that this is really a tool that can be used to help you understand what's not true and we, and to help you not get as caught up in it. So I thank you very much for your attention and coming and whatever side you're on, I hope things get better tomorrow <laughs> or start to get better. <laughs> anyway, all right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.